Right, so over the years fishing this the Eastern and Southern Cape area, I've learned that bronze whaler sharks, number one, like the pushing tide. So the ideal place you would have is like a long wading bank with a very deep trough and far out there is another sandbank. Um, often you will never reach that bank, but they seem to hang around those sandbanks and I think it's for safety or maybe they're feeding there. So I like to target those species um, where the tide's starting to push. They like feeding that first hour, two to three of that pushing tide. And then as it's wading out of the bank, throwing your bait into the trough, there's another big bank behind you. All right, so with the water looking good for bronze whaler sharks, I decided to go nice and light for them. And I grabbed my new eyelash viper. Um, I was still getting used to the rod and I was very excited to catch a shark with it. So on the eyelash viper, I put my Ben Fierce um, 8500 and I also put 50 pound braid on it, so not too heavy, it's like a nice medium tackle range that could handle any fish from big to small. Just uh, put on the Ben Fierce 8000, give it a go. Made a little non need trace and walked out of the bank, cast it, and on my way back with full flat. So, be a little bronzy or smooth down. See you now when we land it. Fishing with the eyelash viper as well. Let's see what it's like on the bit bigger fish, but holding up nicely. So we were fortunate enough to test the new um, owner Mutu circle hooks. It's quite a nice hook. The, the feature about the hooks that I really like is the fact that it comes in a 12 0 So it's got a nice big hook. It's a solid, strong hook. And so for targeting your big sharks, this hook's perfect. We use this hook in a 10 0 size and a 12 0 targeting these little bronzies. And the nice thing was that we didn't miss one fish on these hooks. Normally with these bronzies, um, what's quite nice about them is that when you catch one, you can expect to catch a few more. Um, and as I said earlier, they do like feeding with that first push of the tide. So you haven't got a big window to target these species. So you've got an hour or two to, to target them. But during that hour or two, you can really catch quite a few. Um, as I said, if you catch one, you can expect to catch a few more. And that's what makes it such a fun species to catch. waited out quite far to throw our baits in and walk back to the beach so when you hooked the fish you had a, actually quite a long fight back and those little bronzies were quite fussy in the shallow water and just added to the fun of this whole fight getting them forcing them over the bank and then fighting them in the shallow water on the bank and it was really nice fun targeting these smaller fish um, on the bank and pulling them over the bank
But Enrico is saying a big bloody bait with his Medusa, obviously looking for a bigger fish, but he made short work of these smaller fish using the heavy tackle. Well, the bite was definitely on and in the chaos of us helping each other grab fish taking photos and releasing it Bimby put his rod in the rod holder and while his rod was in the holder he actually got a bite and unfortunately his line got wrapped with mine when you're in that situation we actually get tangled up with another angler and the fish is taking line and you wrap to them the best thing to do is actually just loosen up your drag as much as possible and let your line just run with that other line and Try and get next to the angle, angler and see if you can sort out the wrap. Um, if you can unwrap the line, it's nice, but if you can't, just leave your drag loose and just pick up the slack of the an other angler as he brings his fish in. And after he landed, the fish just un untangle everything. Bimpy grabbed his rod and we stood next to each other, uh, sort of worked, uh, went under over a little bit. And while we were doing that, I also went on with the fish and we realized the fish were running in different directions, we weren't tangled anymore and we had a nice little double up. Okay, well, Vimpy is fighting his fish and uh, his line was close to mine and I presumed that we were tangled, so I just free spooled. But now that his fish is close, we see it's a different fish. So. Lucky escape. Well, although these fish weren't very big, um, if you end up in this situation where you're getting double ups with your, with your mates, it just turns out to be such a nice little fishing session and it's always fun to end up in a scenario like this. Well, at the end of the day, it wasn't the biggest bronzes in the world, but the nice thing was that I could catch a few fish on my new eyelash viper and just make the rod work a bit and just prepare myself for the day when I really hook a big fish on this rod. Supporting the weight of the shark as we're carrying it back. It's just better help for them rather than picking it up by its tail and just flinging it back. We try to keep our fish alive and keep them in decent condition. Dion also joined us in this little session and he had his Ori tag and he loves tagging fish. So as we were landing fish, Dion was there to put a tag in the fish, measure them, record them and put them back in the water.
after I released my fish, I turned around and noticed that Enrico was on again. And it's just so much fun just to be part of this little smash we had on the beach. Right, so the trace we used, you guys can follow it on the link below. It's just a straightforward full metal jacket shark trace. So go look down at the link, look at the video how we make it, and next time you throw a shark, you can use the same trace. Just remember we are catching sharks here. They got teeth and they're very sharp and they can really cause a lot of damage. So when you take out the hooks, or carry the fish back to the water. Just be very careful and make sure you're safe. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed our little bronzy smash. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and look out for some more fishing content coming your way.